What's going on guys? King Shrats here back into the video on the channel and today the apron's back. That's right. I finally cooked again. It has been four days which is the longest I've gone without cooking for about I don't know four years. So it was good to get back in the kitchen and make stuff. Let's get a quick rundown. We also do before I even say anything have a review going for as you can see over here. I'm just gonna get into this because I'm hungry and I don't want this stuff to get cold because nobody likes cold mac and cheese. So let me pour my drink real quick like I always do. Oh I switched. It's um this is raspberry lemonade. I usually don't use raspberry, I usually do the pink lemonade. And I forgot to even put this new water bottle in the fridge. Thank goodness I have my coldest water bottle because it comes in the clutch and it'll actually make it cold. Won't you, man? Yes, you will. This thing really is clutch, man. It really is. <laughs> I use this thing so much all day, all night. Take it with me wherever I go. Um, yeah, if, if you do want one, I do say it all the time. People have purchased them. If you have, let me know how you like it. Um, I'm curious to know because I've been using this thing for about a month now and I'm a huge fan of it. But the link is in the description if you do want one. Also, the giveaway that we're doing is also in the description down below as well. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Cheetos Mac and Cheese. I wanted to review these because I saw them in Walmart finally. They've been out, I'm not sure how long, but I've been looking for them for a while and I finally got a hold of them. I did the jalapeno and I did the flaming Hot. They also come in the cheesy flavor, but I figured that would kind of just taste like Kraft Mac and Cheese. So I didn't even bother, I do have it. Um, if people want me to do that, I'll throw it in another video. I do have that one, it's still in my kitchen. I just didn't make it. Also a disclaimer, I added regular cheese to my Mac and Cheese. My mom's been doing that for me since I was a kid with the Mac and Cheese, whenever I did the Kraft. Big on doctoring things up, as she used to call it. Even the collard greens that I made, which I'll get into, they're from the can. If you know, you know. The canned greens only come from one brand, and you have to season them up just a little bit, which is what my mom used to do. I did it the same way that she used to. We've got a hot link. Um, it's a turkey hot link, and I grilled it. As you can see the nice little grill marks on there. I used to love that with that kind of barbecue. Now, these are boneless pork barbecue ribs. Boneless were on sale. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's why I got boneless. A lot of people are vehemently against boneless ribs. I understand where you're coming from, but we are budget ballers, as I always say. They were on sale. I seasoned them up Caroline style. So there's a mustard vinegar type of barbecue sauce going on on here. And these, I'll get to these first because I don't want these to get cold before I try them. We got some cornbread. Now they're Pillsbury. Same idea. I went with my mom's creative doctoring it up. As you can see, I seasoned them a little bit and I also added bacon. So we got some bacon cornbread. I wish I had jalapenos so I would have added it to it, but we didn't. I added butter. I added bacon. I love cornbread. I wish I had honey. Don't Popeye's biscuit me. Oh, that's good. Mmm. I'm impressed. As far as cornbread goes, it's usually not, there, there's no butter to it. It kind of just tastes like a corn muffin, but they added enough sweet to it, or maybe I did, so it might not be indicative of how a review should go. I usually put honey on my cornbread. Not gonna lie about that either, but of course, like I always do, I don't carry honey in my house. And I wasn't thinking about it while I was in the store, but as far as, now you know, if you know, you know, if you grew up eating cornbread and they weren't making it from scratch, scratch, you probably used the blue box. If you know the blue box, go ahead and comment below. The blue box was always in the clutch. It always had blue box and like set my pantries growing up. And that's what my mom used to make cornbread. And then when my aunt came from Georgia, she started using the blue box. But then she started doing other stuff with it, right? She had like a actual corn to the cornbread, like jalapenos to the cornbread, or bacon to the cornbread. And that's when I realized that cornbread is so versatile. This is actually really good. Oh, wow. Yes, I seasoned it. But if you get stock made, other made stuff, you probably should season it anyway. I want to get into these. I'm sure a lot of you want to know how these taste. And I do too. As you can see, this kind of looks radioactive. So I'm hoping that it's hot. Hoping it's got that flaming hot taste. I'm going to try this one first, just because Flamin' Hot is the most popular. There it is in all its splendor. Flamin' Hot, mac and cheese, first time. What are we saying? It's 
there. It's there. It's there. I will say it's there. My problem with it is this. And again, I'm probably the worst food reviewer in the world because I like everything. Yes, it's good and it's edible, but it's 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 just like I feel like maybe because I make a lot of mac and cheese that I could make a better mac and cheese than this using regular mac and cheese and crushed up flaming hot Cheetos. So if you've got a good mac and cheese recipe already, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Take that, get flaming hot Cheetos if you want that taste. Crush them up, use a food processor if you have to, get it in there, and, and, and just put them on top like breadcrumbs. Because at the end of the day, these are microwave packs. It tastes like Easy Mac that has flaming hot to it. That's just my honest opinion about it. That's exactly what it is, as you can see. But yeah, I mean, I can still get down with it, but if you're looking for something in a pinch, like if you're a college kid and you're kind of like in the dorms, this wouldn't be a bad thing. Very, very easy Mac S though. I can't say I'm disappointed by it because that's kind of what I expected. It tastes like Flamin' Hot Cheetos. It's even probably less hot than Flamin' Hot Cheetos, if you ask me. That also could be because I added about 50 grams of actual cheese to it because I'm not my biggest fan of Easy Mac. I added cheese to my Easy Mac all the time. My mom added cheese, easy, uh, cheese to her Easy Mac when she made it for me when I was younger. Everything that she did, which is kind of what I have adopted as I've gotten older, is what I said is doctoring it up. But let me get into this jalapeno one. Let me see what this one's like. Jalapeno Cheetos Mac and Cheese. Let's see, let's see. Same thing, same thing. It's got a little of that kick to it, but if you've seen my mukbang where I made my own steak and jalapeno mac and cheese, if you want jalapeno mac and cheese and you want like real deal jalapeno mac and cheese, in my opinion, make a good mac and cheese recipe. Add crushed jalapenos, pickled jalapenos, diced jalapenos, fresh jalapenos, however you want to do it, and it'll be better than this. This is still passable if you're just looking for like college easy mac kind of deal i expected it to be like this but if it's new we're gonna try it that is my motto it actually is my motto it's not my motto at all it should be my motto it's my motto now if it's new somebody says try it and i can get to it that is my promise to you as a content creator i, I will do so as you can see i have no problem eating it i just it ain't my mom's mac and cheese you know what i'm saying but this would probably be dope maybe on a burger or even on a hot dog. Or eat. We don't have a hot dog. We have a hot link. Let's see something. Let's see what we're working with. Let's see what we're working with. All right, I'm going to take the hot link. I'm about to get real fat kid on you guys. Hold on a second. By the way, that's a... Mm. I'm going to show you this though. Got that link, right? What you got to do? Now, if I had a smoker, or if I wasn't lazy, smoking them is even better. But you can see I just grilled it up. Nice and grilled for you. I love hot wings. In general, somebody, I know how y'all are. because I love sausage, okay? I don't know if it's because I'm part German, but I love every different kind. <laughs> just so bad sounding, I know somebody's going to say something. Every different kind of food sausage that you can think of. Bratwurst, kielbasa, hot wings, breakfast, you name it. Hot dogs, hot dog is a sausage. I'm just a huge fan of them all. But I want to fat kid this up for you because, well, this is what I do. And I want to see if I can pull this off. We're going to make a sandwich <laughs> because I turn everything into a sandwich. Now, I just got to figure out, I wish I would have had a knife on me, but I wasn't thinking. But the light bulb turned on halfway through this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our cornbread. I hack everything. This is just, this is how I get down. All right, we're going to take this hot link. Take this hot link, and I'm like, oh my goodness. I was looking to crush it down, but we're, gonna, we're just going to do it this way. I'm going to take our hot link. All right, hot link goes on. Next. Boom. You know where I'm going with this. I fat kid everything. Don't tell me that you ain't the type that turns everything into a sandwich. Okay, because I am, I was, I have been since I was a kid. My dad was the same way. And there we go. We got a flaming hot cornbread <laughs> mac and cheese. Hot link sandwich. What we saying? That mac and cheese is a good compliment, without a doubt. Good compliment. 
By itself, I even have some collard greens right here. By itself, it's Easy Mac, you know? And if you like Easy Mac, nobody, maybe you do. I know people out there who really love like Kraft Mac and Cheese, Easy Mac. It wasn't really my thing. Um, I ate it in college just because like it was an easy way to get food. In the dorms, maybe you come home after a night of uh, festivities, sometimes just make it Easy Mac. But it was never my choice. But I do know people who did like it. They're like, what do you mean? It's the best. I'm like, all right. Hey, I'm not here to judge you because sometimes I like canned stuff too. Like I said, the collard greens, you can. I won't lie about that. Can I make collard greens? Yeah. It takes a while. You got to make them. Sometimes my mom was always big on like, if she made like baked beans, people still do this. Like baked beans recipes, they'll use the canned baked beans. Season them, add their own stuff and make it what it is. I do that a lot. And mainly because... I gotta get into this rib though. I pressure cooked it, finished it off on the grill. And that's what we're doing. And it is tender. And that mustard sauce, I got a little over here too. I have some more. So it is. You don't even really need it to be honest. But it's always good to have extra barbecue sauce. And it always depends on where you are. That's tender. Not oh, really tender. Cardinal sin for barbecue people is to use pressure cookers boiling your ribs. For sure. Real deal barbecue, they will, you, you don't put that in a contest. It's supposed to be cooked for a long time, smoked for a long time, but ain't nobody got time for that. Maybe one day, if this becomes my full-time job, because right now it's just a part-time gig, I'll start doing crazy things that take time, but right now, I might the rest of y'all. Not rumbling. Maybe you're, maybe you're not like that, but if, if you aren't, please, then you know, share in your wealth. But I got to work for my own, in my other time to make money. So, a lot of times, things like collard greens, let me get in here too. I'll tell you what I did to these too. Get them greens in. From a can. What were you saying? Now, my mom used to do it these and I do the same thing now. She would add garlic. Not garlic. What's the garlic? Garlic powder, yes. Garlic. Um, and you would get like broth or, or bone broth if you could. Because we didn't eat a lot of pork in my house growing up because my father wouldn't didn't eat it. Um a lot of times, like traditionally, collard greens are usually made with a ham hock or with a neck bone. And if you don't know what a neck bone is, it's literally a, it's a neck bone. A pig, ham hock, it's a hock. Uh, a lot of times, that's what it's made with. Sometimes we would use like turkey wings or things like that. But with this kind, my mom would add vinegar because like we like ours a little bit of vinegar in them. So that's what I did. And you just season them up so that it doesn't taste like that, you know. But and we, we always ate like that because my mom worked the job, my dad worked the job. So for me, it's become the same thing. A lot of times people always ask like, you know, is this homemade? And sometimes I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, well, homemade's better. You're right, it is. But I don't have time for that. I like to cook my meals 30 minutes or less. Things like this, if you're making ribs, you, you put them on a smoker in the morning to eat at night and vice versa. You go to a real barbecue place, they put them things out and they're 10, 12 hours cooking brisket, cooking ribs. And that's what it takes. But the home cook, which is what I consider myself, I'm not a chef, I'm a home cook. I cook food at home that anyone could make. You know, I try to add flair to wherever I can. Just like even adding cheese to my Easy Mac to give it more of a homemade feel to it. So a lot of my stuff is like semi-homemade, if that makes sense. You two are rib. I love that sauce. Carolina barbecue has really grown on me over the years. I went to college in the Midwest and out there, Kansas City barbecue is king. And it's so good. If you ever had the liberty of having burnt ends, which is when you smoke a brisket, 
that end part gets charred more than obviously the inside. So a lot of times they'll take that off and they'll serve it. Just that. You can get burnt ends from a lot of barbecue places. There's a barbecue place around here that does burnt ends. And it's really good. I don't know if it's still open now. A lot of businesses closed down this year, obviously. But in Kansas City, I have a thing that's called burnt ends on bun. And not on a bun. No, burnt ends on bun. And it is just delicious. So good. But I started traveling when I was in college. You know, we, we, we even went to Texas for a football game. We flew down. And this is when I knew I loved the state of Texas. I still do to this day. I've been there on vacation multiple times. Spring break. I've been to Austin. But in this case, we went down for a game. In a place called San Marcos. Texas State. It was a school. And we got off the plane. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. Right? And... We're hungry because we're all football players. Like, we're big dudes. We haven't eaten since, like, probably 4 p.m. Because when the traveling, you eat, don't eat, and you eat in the afternoon. And by the time you, you know, get your stuff to the airport and whatever, it's about 10 p.m. Which is actually good stuff, man. I wish I had honey. It's my only complaint. And we get there at 10 p.m. Everybody's hungry. And a lot of times they feed you. And I used to have a joke with one of my teammates to say we were going to get sacked. And what that meant was they give us a sack lunch. Because we don't take care of, obviously, our own food. They do. But we get there, 10 o'clock at night, and they're like, all right, we guys, we got a little snack for you. <laughs> 10 o'clock at night, we get to the hotel, down in the, uh, like, the reception hall, like, they have weddings and whatever. They had the biggest Texas barbecue spread I had ever seen. Ever. And I remember they had brisket, they had corn, um, they had uh, uh, mac and cheese, like, loaves of bread, because apparently that's what they do. Um, like these big pickles, which I stayed away from, uh, mashed potatoes, baked beans, crazy amount of food. And I'm talking to the guy because there's people serving us, like sitting in our hotel staff. And I'm like, you know, I'm that type of person where I, I make friends. I like to make friends wherever I go. So I asked the guy serving the food. I'm like, you guys do this all the time? <laughs> he looks at me with the biggest smile. <laughs> and, I, and I just knew I loved Texas after that. He just big smile and he goes, everything better in Texas. <laughs> and I was like, what? I thought he said better. So I'm like, what? He goes, everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, this place is great. I love Texas. I've been there on vacation. Um, I went to Austin for South by Southwest when I was in college. I went to South Padre, which, you know, when I was in college. And I've been down to Dallas a few times. And I have to say, Texas does it right. I can't say on a list of states what is my... Obviously, New Jersey is number one. It always will be. But Texas is way, way, way up there. They just know how to do things. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. But they feed you. Every like the steaks are like also I remember I went to Amarillo to do the big Texan challenge. I wish YouTube was a thing back then, but it wasn't because I won. I almost you know, I, I almost choked that day. But hey, that, that challenge wouldn't be anything for me anymore. It's like a 72 ounce steak and like a baked potato, um, sides. I forgot what other sides they were. I know I had to substitute and do two orders of the uh, potato because I don't eat salad. And they let me. And they're like, You sure you wanna do this? Because potato's probably harder to eat. But it was good. I love to do that again. Well, I know how to feed you. And I remember being there on, on South by Southwest and going to like um, the, the liquor store. And, and and even like the Budweiser had like the Texas star on it. I'm like, yo, how come they get, how come no other state does stuff like this, man? I've gotten several tattoos when I was in Texas. I have one on my neck. I don't know which side it's on. But I have both sides, but I'm, I can't see. But it's on one of my sides. Um, that tattoo I got on spring break, and it's of my mother's name. <laughs> you can probably guess the story, but I'll tell you anyway. I was on spring break. Duh. And I have a tendency, not when I go places, 
I'll commemorate it with a tattoo. I don't know why, but I've done it like four or five times. So, this particular spring break, spring break for us is right after spring ball, like practice. And most of the football players will go down. And in the Midwest, the hot spot for spring break is South Padre Island. Most of the Midwest schools go to South Padre. So, we get down there, probably like day three. <laughs> I got some funny stories from spring break. I'll try to clean some of them up so I can tell them. But we get down there, and probably day three. And I just remember because I didn't go home. And it was my junior year. And we never go home as a football player. You don't go home a lot. And I just remember for whatever reason, even though I love being at school and I love my friends, I wasn't homesick, but I'm really close with my parents. And my mother is no exception to that. But me, I said, me and my father have matching tattoos. And I never had anything for my mom. <laughs> but at this point, me and my dad already had a matching tattoo, which is this one. It's later on, we've ended up getting two more. But I remember just being like, I want to do something for my mom. I miss my mom, right? <laughs> so... After a night of festivities, for some reason in Texas, there are tattoo parlors next to every bar. Bar none. It was the second time I did that. In Texas. I did it in Austin, too. There's a tattoo parlor, and I have a tendency when I'm with my friends, I'm the guy who you can't find. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm not anymore. Back then I was. I would just leave. I'll go. I don't know where I'm going, but I go. Whether it be I left because I met someone, friend, um, or because I just felt like leaving. I've done it a million times. So in this case, I was on one of my missions where I was just like, yo, I'm out. <laughs> so I just left. It was at a place called Senior Frogs. And there's a tattoo parlor like right down the street. I'm walking back to the hotel room. And I see a tattoo parlor. I'm like, screw it. Two o'clock in the morning, I walk in. Tell the guy, I want to get my mom's name tattooed on me. He's like, where? I'm like, my neck. That's exactly how I said it too. I'm like, my neck. <laughs> so I was just, you know. And he did it. And I got it done. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, Central Time, which means it's 4 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time, I call my mom, which to my surprise, because my mom, it doesn't really answer the phone that night because she's like, you know, doesn't, she does not work it. <laughs> so I call her and I'm like, mom. You're the best. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. She's like, she's like, is everything okay? You know, because I'm 4 o'clock in the morning. She thinks something happened. She knows my spring break. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I just want to tell you the best. I bleeping love you. <laughs> and I got a tattoo with your name on it. And I sent her a picture. And I sent it to her. And she was just like, Dave, what did you do? That's what I do, man. That is what I do. But spring break was crazy. Particularly that one. They never let you in with people. It can be a bit of a problem if you meet people and you want to take them back to your resort. You have to have a wristband. And they don't let visitors in, which everybody tries to sneak them in. But me being me, two of my friends, it was down to like five people. Two of my friends had people with them. I didn't. I'm not, I'm not like that. I didn't this time, but there was a guard, <laughs> she was a lady, and she wouldn't let nobody in, she was being mean, I mean, she's doing her job, she was getting fired, so, they had girls with them, and they were like, they're really not going to let us in, and I was like, I got this, <laughs> she was bigger. Ain't no shame in that. I think big girls look good. So I had to provide the diversion. So I started spitting game. How you doing? You know, my name's from New Jersey, man. Dave, blah, blah, blah. Whoop, 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 talking. I'm like, what time you get off? <laughs> and then meanwhile, I'm, I'm like talking to her, making her face my It looked like a movie. Making her face my direction, and my friends were like, not around around the back, and they get through. And she's like, oh, I get off in like a half hour. So, I bit the bullet, I talked to her for a half hour, and then I, 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 I took her to Pizza Hut. <laughs> I swear to God, I took her to Pizza Hut. 
I got her a Supreme Pizza. She sat there in her guard uniform, and here I am, <laughs> like a tank top. <laughs> you couldn't make this stuff up, man. Nothing happened, okay? But after that, she let us in with whoever we wanted to. Because I, I explained to her there, and I was like, look, bro, you're not going to give me a hard time. I wasn't telling you, I'm just trying to let these people in your butt. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was so freaking smooth, man. Hey, it worked. It worked. <laughs> it did work. It is what it is. I had to, I had, I, I'm a team player. As long as it doesn't involve anybody getting hurt. Or actually jumping on the grenade, as I say, I ain't gonna do that. But I'll, I'll humor people. I'll humor people all day. You know, I try to be a team player. A lot of people, because you know, especially women, no, dudes are like this too. But women, you know how there's always that one friend who it's like the hater. Like you're talking, like there'll be like four of you, and there's like five of them, and everybody's hitting it off. There's four guys, five girls. And there's that one who's just sitting there, just stank face, like. <laughs> it always seems to be that way. And when it. Because you know how it is when you're out at the club. Again, I'm talking about things that happened in my past, not now. I'm way too old for any of this hijinks. I don't even go out anymore. But. You know how when you're out and you're trying to talk to somebody and. You kind of got to make your move and they're like. No, it is the last call for up. And you're like, oh no. And then it's about to turn the lights on, and it's about to be like that. So, whenever you get to that point, there's always that one that's like, no, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I understand trying to protect your friends. And I'm not saying it in that sense. But, like, if I know, like, if I'm, if I know you, and a lot of times it happened to me where it was a situation where, the, that one was, was I knew, like, liked me or one of my friends, and they were, like, mad. You know, because I didn't hang out with questionable people. So I'm going to say that, too, because I can understand the protection factor, too. Like, 100%, because there's a lot of weird men and women out there, and I don't trust anybody, and I understand that. But we didn't hang out with questionable people, and a lot of times it was people we had already been around, or there was a history Get what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like a random people. I, I wasn't the type of person that, like, went to bars and met random women and did stuff. I, I never was that kind of guy. No. I had history. And even though I was a serial dater, I was a serial dater. Like, I was like, I'd talk to somebody and then I'd see, like, a red flag and be like, okay, I'm out. And I was terrible. I don't know why I'm outing myself, but. I think I just laugh at it now because I don't even waste my time with the serial dating and stuff. Like, I, I'm, like, past all that stuff. But I think when you're in your early 20s, you're just kind of, like, playing the field. Especially college-age people. You know? That's kind of just what you do. Hmm. So this is what I did. And what everybody I knew who went to college did. But it was a while ago. I don't know what things are like now. This was right when Facebook was popping. Facebook started in like mid to late 2000s. And it was like the coolest thing ever when it first came out. Because it was it, it made campus so much smaller. And your ability to meet people, you would already know everybody before you even went out. You know. It was Facebook was Tinder before Tinder. It just was. And now you dip my cornbread in barbecue sauce. I'm not dude when I get to talking, I just be doing questionable stuff, but long story short, Facebook was like Tinder when it first came out. Instead of swiping left, what you did back then when you saw someone you liked on Facebook was this. You know what this is? <laughs> That's the poke. And you would just see a random woman, and women used to do it to me, it was mutual. I come back and we used to, I just check. I check my pokes, <laughs> see who's there. So and so poked you. And then it just starts. You, you answered you back. Do I know you? No. But you should. 
<laughs> That's how it always went. Always. People just, it was like Tinder. It really was. I would say the majority of the women that I met in college when Facebook came out was through Facebook. Because it came out, I think I was like like a sophomore or something. No, I, I forgot what year it was, but it took a while for Facebook to get to my school because when Facebook first came out, it was only like Ivy League schools. And then it worked around the East Coast. And a lot of my friends from back home were like, yo, you got Facebook out there? What's good? And I was like, what is Facebook? And they're like, yo, Facebook, tell me about it. I'm like, what? So then I would check the website. And every like day or two days, it would be like, Facebook is now open at, and it would like list like 20 schools. And when it hit my school, man, it was on. I mean, I've never seen anything like Facebook in the, in the late 2000s. There been nothing, I don't think, it, you can't say ever, but there will be nothing in my life from that, you hadn't, the world hadn't seen anything like that. It just became, like, it's for social networking, which it did do, because especially you went, on, you went on spring break or you travel, you meet people from other schools, and then the old Facebook used to show where your friends were from. So, like, it would show that I had, like, a bunch of friends from, like, College of New Jersey or Rutgers or, like, Iowa or Iowa State or so on. And then all of a sudden, you'd be like, who do you know from Hawaii? You click that name and it would just open up a whole new world. But I met so many people off Facebook from other schools, from my school. So it, it, it was popping. Like, Facebook and MySpace. MySpace? Oh, man. MySpace was where you met people that didn't go to college. Because Facebook back then, you had to go to college. It had. Had to. No friends but. Because you needed a college email address. So. MySpace was so different because it was so like Facebook seemed like sophisticated and MySpace was like music and like it had like you know you could you could change music on your profile and change the skins in the back and you had the top eight which you don't know what the top eight was the top eight was literally no matter how many friends you had you could have eight of them Hey, topic. Well, I'm trying to record. What you doing? <laughs> and you could change them. So you knew when people were fighting because people were petty. It was like, it's almost like Instagram when you get an argument with somebody or you break up with them, you unfollow them. So you come out of the top eight. So a lot of dudes, women too, but... They would just wait in the wings. Because the guys, the girls, my boyfriend would be in the top eight. <laughs> you wait for the dude get taken out. All of a sudden, inbox. Hey, what happened? <laughs> That's why I don't make any relationships public. For that reason. It's bad enough going through a breakup. But when you have it posted all over social media, I think I have to get married before I posted my relationship. In any way, shape, or form. I have to have a wife and kids. But, like, boyfriends and girlfriends, they don't last forever a lot. I've had a lot of girlfriends in my life. A few of which thought I'm going to get married. I have a ring in my teeth. I'm not going to be able to get it here. Whatever. Reminds me of Anchorman. You know what Anchorman guys like ribs? I had ribs for them. So that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> Whenever we come out in college, too. So. Right. That's all people did. I'm not going to lie. As much as I'm thinking mac and cheese is decent, I'm not going to eat it just to eat it. So, I'm going to eat the greens though. I'm going to get it that cornbread. I feel like I didn't do anything. What did I? I didn't do anything in my life after college ended really. Nothing exciting. I just became an old man immediately. I was like 22. I was like old. Time to start working, you know. Get my first car, which was a Chevy Malibu with like nothing in it. Like, nothing. Like, it didn't even have a CD player. Or an auxiliary, which is all that really matters now. But I feel like once you, once you, once you graduate college, you start getting more like serious about life in general you start thinking about like okay like it's time to 
get a house and stuff. So you, you kind of just like lock down. And so for me, the partying and stuff definitely stopped after college. I did some stuff my first few years back. Like I would go down the shore of the Jersey Shore. Not that stuff you see on television. But we go down there. Excuse me. You know I hate that. And do like the partying down there and stuff. So a little of that. But nothing else. It's boring. I have a very boring life. Now, boring. Boring. It's me and the dogs. And I go on walks. I work out. I work. I eat. Play video games sometimes. Yeah, no, I'm done. It's pretty much all I know. You know the sad part is, I don't find it depressing. I couldn't do what I did back then. I don't know how I did the stuff I did back then. I'd be out all night and up by six in the morning. There were times that I went out. My birth, my remember my twenty-first birthday in particular. I turned. Or was it my twentieth? Twentieth, twentieth birthday, because I was already done playing football at the time I was twenty. I was in grad school, but my twentieth birthday, I went out because it was only a Wednesday. And we have winter conditioning on Thursday morning. I went out all night. All night. All night um, in consuming liquids that make you feel some type of way. And winter conditioning is at 6 o'clock in the morning. I stayed up. And I just went. And I told my position coach, because we do it position by position. I was like, coach, listen. I was out all night. I'm not going to make no excuses. I'm going to give you everything I got. I'm not going to lag behind anybody, but if you see me run to the trash can, it's because I had to throw. That's all. I'll be right back. And he was—he just started laughing because I was like, listen, it was my birthday. You know me. I'm going to still work. I put my work in. And actually, I didn't throw. And then I went to class, went and lifted weights, went and did my schoolwork, which consisted of standing there with my group and doing absolutely nothing but <laughs> smiling. <laughs> I had a girl. <laughs> Listen, I knew she had a crush on me. And she was in my group, and she did all the work. You were the real MVP. If you ever get a hold of anything that I ever have done on social media, shoot me a holler. To, to holler's your boy. I'm not saying for anything else other than I just want to thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I remember we went to a bar. And she was there, <laughs> and she was chief, like, I knew she did, I'm not stupid, I can tell how she acted, but she told me, she was like, I did everything in our group, because I think you're so hot, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and all my friends were next to me, and they just looked at me, and like, because I, I used to, I mean, I'll just put it this way, like, I, I used to make friends with people who... I'll tell that story another day. Oh, man. I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's like restaurants. You just wait, waitresses and, and staff. <laughs> I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not incriminating myself. It's not a criminal offense, but... I, there's one and she was the manager at a popular... Uh, barbecue establishment, and I used to get a reloadable gift card. <laughs> she would go in there and be getting like a hundred dollars worth of steak and, and with my friends. And... <laughs> you couldn't make this stuff up. Anyway, Thirty-five minutes of course because all of my videos cannot be longer than shorter than forever. So if you made it this far and you watched this much, wow! You probably heard some crazy stuff. I don't rewatch any of this. So whatever I said, it's there. You can have it. Anyway, it's been your boy Kingstrat. We'll be back tomorrow with more content. This ain't even here. Y'all don't want to see that. Tomorrow, more content. I love y'all. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.